So like I said, we're going to be studying heaven. Uh, last week we studied, or the last time we had class, we studied how we're all decaying and dying. There's a particular verse in Romans, I believe, where it talks about <clears throat> the earth is groaning, uh, like it's dying, and it's waiting for the resurrection, waiting for it to be renewed, uh, which is pretty cool. And, uh, you know, we talked about how we're, we're dying because Adam and Eve sinned in the garden. The curse is death and that we're dying. But that's not the end. Um, and even way before that, we were teaching about how death is really the doorway into a whole other world, uh, which is eternity. So, and we talked about two eternities, heaven and hell. And, uh, of course, the hell eternity is a debated topic. But um, today we're talking about what happens when you die and before you're resurrected to new life. What happens in that in between, if anything. And today I want to give you guys a chance to actually look at the verses and we'll try to decide what comes up, what we come up with in the few minutes. I don't know whose that is, 10, 15. Um, in the few minutes that we have together, we, we will work together and just look through some of these verses um, because it's a pretty high debated topic and I just want to start with why even why even who cares why even look at that who cares what happens in between as long as I get there um, and I, I came up with two things of why I think it's important to study one is for truth's sake many denominations have lots of different opinions about that and if you don't know what a denomination is, that just means that within Christianity, there's different uh, branches, you could say churches, but that differ slightly in their beliefs on, on the Bible. The main things are mostly the same, but they differ slightly. Uh, there's a lot of different opinions about this, and for us, I, I want us to know the truth about it. And we'll spend a little bit of time studying, because it's something that maybe you'll never study again. But to understand this truth, um, and like Timothy says, to be able to divide it rightly. So I know what the Bible says. I'm not going to be swayed because I don't because I don't know. Because somebody could come in and just start telling you, well, this is what you need to believe, and it sound convincing. Saying, okay, but have you ever studied it yourself? So that's the first point. And the second point is that uh, I think there's a lot of hope in knowing exactly what's been done for us. To really understand this should bring a lot of hope because I it, it already gave me some just studying it. So one is to know the truth and the other one is to know the hope we have. Uh, when you die and before Judgment Day, what happens? And that's what we're going to be studying. So, uh, so far, what do you guys think? What do you guys think happens? When you die, right when you die... What do you think happens? It's like a blink of an eye. You're right in front of judgment. Okay. Okay, well, uh, okay. Anybody else? Right when you die. Kim, what do you think happens right when you die? The same as Josh. It's, it's like a blink for you. Yeah. Just like that. Anybody else? What do you think, Guillermo? Same. It's going to be a blink. Anybody else? All right, well, what do you think about um, <clears throat> Moses, okay? How many years ago do you think? What is he, like 4,000 or something? Mm -hmm. Is He's still waiting, right? Mm -hmm. 4,000 years. Well, I mean, <clears throat> go ahead. He was in the New Testament, wasn't he? Well, we're going to get to that. Okay. So, it... Maybe to him it's a blink. To us, it's 4,000 years. That's a long time sitting in the grave. Okay? So, okay, yes, maybe to him it's a blink. So that's, that's, that's a one opinion right now. Um, Elmer, thoughts? When you die, what, what do you think? What do you think happens? Uh, so what's, what's the order? Anybody know the order from death? Till resurrection. Uh, so you know what 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 happens? What's the order of things? You die, 
you're this, you're that, new heaven, like we talked about, the new heaven and new earth. Um, any ideas right now how that all works, if there's a sequence? Are you following me? No, I just thought it was death and then judgment. Death, judgment, and then you were separated, heaven, hell, or new earth, new hell, hell, and then eternal life with Jesus. Okay. So, there's two, there's two different views on this um, death state. Uh, and we're going to talk about it today because it's actually really interesting. And uh, it's a, there's a, within the church, there's divided thoughts on this. Not everybody believes the same. And you know what? That's okay. It's not an issue that we need to fight and kill each other over. Because it's when you die, who cares? As long as you write, get to eternity, who cares what happens? But I think, like I said, that for one reason to study is for truth's sake and for hope's sake. So we're going to dive into it. Uh, there's two different views, uh, A and B. One is we sleep until Christ returns and then all the dead in him are resurrected, which is what Moses and David and Paul and Peter and, and my grandpa, everybody's doing, waiting. And then there's another view called the intermediate heaven, where after death, the souls of the saints go to heaven with the Lord and wait to be resurrected in the eternal bodies, a resurrected, resurrection day. All right, there's two thoughts. So the immediate isn't one of them? Immediate heaven. Well, Im immediate... Judgment? Judgment Day hasn't occurred yet. Or has it? No. I think, but like once death happens, I think like they, go to they judgment? live outside of time. So it's not time in our sense, but. Maybe. But it hasn't happened yet. Both were predestined, hasn't it? Uh, well, the Judgment Day, but I mean like it actually happening you know because Christ returns you know that's that's when it ha he, he's comes and judges so far I mean they said he came to Mexico but I don't know that was somebody else apparently because he died <laughs> um, so I I mean we'll, we'll, we'll go through it uh, again we only have a few short time together but we're gonna try to tackle this topic today so there's two views one is soul sleep and the other is intermediate heaven and you will be surprised how many believe in intermediate heaven versus soul sleep. And there's quite a few that believe in soul sleep versus intermediate heaven. In my study of it, I was pretty amazed. It's new to me because, oh, I won't tell you. But yes, um, those are the two. All right, so what we're going to do now is I'm going to allow you guys, I'm not going to teach it to you. I'm going to allow you guys to read some of the verses. And I want you guys to discuss it. So... Uh, who leans more towards intermediate heaven? Just, okay, intermediate heaven, intermediate heaven. Anybody else? Who leans more towards intermediate heaven? Okay, two. And then the rest of you, soul sleep, soul sleep, I'm assuming. Who's not sure? Okay, we got three, four. Okay, four to four, right? One, two, three, four. Perfect. We're going to split it in half. All right, so intermediate heavens. Uh, I'm going to give you soul sleep, actually, because, uh, <laughs> because it's going to make this interesting. All right, now we're going to talk about it. <clears throat> uh, and the soul sleepers, I want you to look at intermediate heaven. Uh, and then we're going to talk about it, okay? First, because you, you lean there, I want you to look at the verses on the opposite side to have an open mind for it. And then we'll chat about it. So, I'm going to need you to get into teams of four. And we're going to split into, we're going to split this together. So, if Elmer, Kimberly, Carla, and Guillermo, if you guys can get together, maybe in these four seats here, and just face each other, uh, you guys are going to go over soul sleep. And, uh, and everyone else, Josh, uh, David... Daisy and Julia, you guys are going to look at intermediate heaven. And I want you just to look at the verses, go through it, 
and then with in about 10 15 minutes we're gonna we'll talk about it with each other all right so what I'm gonna give you today is this guy's uh, all good verses and he's got little thoughts on it and uh, maybe it'll be best if you guys split this up between each other as for me I shall behold your face in righteousness when I awake I shall be satisfied beholding your likeness so David says when I wake up I will see your face beholding your likeness okay so it sounds right like when you know dying you're asleep and then when you rise you wake up and you behold the face of God first Corinthians 15 18 then those also who have fallen asleep in Christ have perished asleep in Christ okay so so far it seems they're sleeping okay so anyone who's died is asleep uh, Thessalonians 4, 13 to 18, that was a big one. Uh, let's see, I'll, I'll read you the important part. Then we who are alive or left will be caught up together. Hmm. But we do not want you to be uninformed, brothers, about those who are asleep, that you may not grieve as others do who have no hope. Okay? Asleep. 1 Samuel 28, 15. I don't know if you know this story, but this is when uh, Saul went to a medium, like the person who calls up spirits from the dead. And he said, why did you wake me? Yeah, so he, he went to uh, the lady and asked her to bring up Samuel so he could talk to him. Because that was his go-to guy. He was the prophet. And he talked to him. And uh, so the lady brought Samuel up. And uh, listen to what he says. First Samuel 28:15. This is the witch lady. Right. <laughs> First Samuel 28:15, and it says, uh, <clears throat> "When the woman saw Samuel, finally the woman said, well, those whose spirit, well, whose spirit do you want me to call up?" Call up Samuel, Saul replied. When the woman saw Samuel, she screamed, You've deceived me. You are Saul. Don't be afraid, the king told her. What do you see? I see a god coming up out of the earth, she said. What does he look like, Saul asked. He's an old man wrapped in a robe. She replied, Saul realized it was Samuel, and he fell to the ground before him. Verse 15, Why have you disturbed me by calling me back? Samuel asked Saul, Because I am in deep trouble Saul replied, the Philistines are at war with me. So then Samuel talks back. Disturb me? Is the... Disturb me. All right, so we can look at other versions. Anybody have a different version of the Bible? The one that says awake. Anybody have that version? I think they did away with that word because it wasn't accurate. First Samuel, <laughs> First Samuel 28, 15. Anybody have a Bible? Read, you want to read it? First Samuel 28, 15. Because... You think it uh, would say awake. Mine says, why have you disturbed? Mm. No. And Samuel said, said, why well, did you, you could disturb? Argue that this is in Samuel. By conjuring me up. Conjuring. <laughs> Alright. So, you, it doesn't say, it doesn't say, and look at the versions, you look at the versions, it doesn't say, why did you wake me up? It just says, why did you disturb me, or why did you bring me back, or something like that. Um, because I always thought that's what it said, why did you wake me up. Um, but still, he brought him back, alright? But that's not the strongest point. Uh, so that's just one for you to think about. Other points, the soul cannot exist apart from the body. Okay, when you die, can the soul separate, or are they lit, tied together? Um... For what happens to the sons of men also happens to the beasts. One thing befalls them as one dies, so dies the other. Surely they all have one breath. Humans have no advantage over beasts, for all is vanity. All go to one place, all are from the dust, and all return to the dust. Which we agree, right? Everybody who dies goes to dust just like your cat or your hamster. They go to the dust. Back to it. People who were brought back to life never spoke of their experiences in heaven. That's the one that got me. That one's pretty crazy. 
So can you think of anybody in the New Testament, Old Testament, that was brought back to life from the dead? Lazarus. 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 Anybody else? Jesus. Jesus. Any others? There was this the story. Little girl. Right. Yeah, the uh, Pharisee's daughter, I think, or the. The centurion's yep. daughter. Yep. Okay, centurion's daughter. So, okay, Lazarus. How many days was he in the grave? Ten. I don't remember. I thought it was three. <laughs> okay, so Lazarus is in the grave. Jesus brought him back to life. What do you think he said? Why did you? <laughs> There's nothing. We don't have any written, <clears throat> no knowledge. He never, as far as we know, he never said anything about it. Him being in, in heaven. Because if, if when you die, you went to heaven, okay, well, he brought back three days. He should have said something. Um, Not only that, if you were in heaven, imagine you getting ripped out of there. Right. How upset you would be. Yeah. All right. Yeah, so that, that, was the one, that was the one that got me. I was like, man, that don't make sense there. Um, the Pharisee's daughter. The only one that we know has come back, uh, Jesus. And where was he during that time? There's a lot of debate on that, too. Yeah, where was he? Um, so, so that's a whole nother topic. Uh, the robber on the cross. Okay, so we're looking at soul sleep. Let's look at the situation of the robber on the cross. All right, this is the one that Elmer and uh, Hannah were looking at um, for the other side. All right, so I don't know if you know this, but originally the Bible written, anybody know what the New Testament was written in? What language? Greek and Aramaic. Anybody want to dis try another one? Spanish? German? Let's be real. It was Greek and Aramaic. <laughs> Alright, she has a, she does have a degree in <laughs> She better know. But okay, so the New Testament was written in Greek and Aramaic. No punctuation. Okay? They don't have periods and commas, semicolons, like we do. That's us. So when it was translated into Latin and then translated to English, all these um, punctuation marks were added so that we can understand it. So, the robber on the cross. Anybody have that verse handy? Luke 23, 43? Pull it up. All right, let's try reading this with and without punctuation. Oh, I have it right there, actually. Here we go. All right, so... Let's say there's no commas anywhere. Uh, actually, this is this is the one uh, for soul sleep. This is this is got the commas in it. Assuredly, I say to you today, comma, you shall be with me in paradise. Okay, what does that sound like? Assuredly, I say to you today, comma, you will be with me in paradise. In the future, maybe. Sounds like a future event, right? All right, so let's move the commas around. Let's put a comma right here instead of here and here. As surely I say to you, comma, today you will be with me in paradise. Sounds different, doesn't it? Well, when you blink. Well, we're not there yet. Just yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so. <clears throat> That's the argument for this verse, because you can't, I mean, you can't deny that it's, if, if it says, today you'll be in paradise, it's, today he's going to be with them in paradise. But yeah, like you said, that's, my dad has always taught us is that he said that because in reality, it's like a blink, but in reality, it's 2,000 years later and he's still in the grave. But that's like trying to put it your human concept into time. Today means today. That's that's so that's those are some of the issues we gotta deal with. But I, I absolutely understand what you're saying. Is that you know on the time thing. Alright, so think about it, that's all. Okay. Uh, surely I say to you today you'll be with me in paradise or surely I say to you today you'll be with me in paradise. Alright, so there's two two points uh, one more. Um, oh, this is this is a thought. Therefore, Jesus, instead of promising that this man would be immediately with him in paradise, 
It was merely saying that he is telling this man the truth today and not some other time. That today I'm telling you absolutely that eventually you will be with me in paradise. Okay, so those are the two thoughts on it. Uh, okay, and I don't know if we're going to have time to go into him. Now nah, we got 10 minutes. It's too heavy to go into. All right, so let's just talk about the soul sleep today and some questions on it. Um, so, okay, like right now we have the, the, the uh, most of us see it as a blink of an eye. All right, so like Josh was saying, dead, when you're dead, you're unconscious. You don't know anything. Um, you're sleeping. And like Jesus would say to this man, today, to him is like today. Because it's a boom. To us... It's not today. It's 2,000 years and maybe longer. All right, so what's true? Uh, I want to read a, a, a parable with you guys um, it, just for the last moments of this class because uh, next week we'll talk about intermediate heaven because we don't have time today. Um, I want to read a parable with you that might shake you a little bit because it, it was doing that to me. Uh, Luke 16. Luke 16. The rich man? Yeah. Alright, so let's look at this real quick because it talks about... <clears throat> okay. So, I guess first going into it is that either this is totally fictional and... Um, you know, because like parables, they're using it as a metaphor. It's not all like the guy bought a field to purchase something into it. Uh, it's totally metaphorical. Uh, but this one, out of all the parables used in the Bible, whether this is a parable or not, is unique because it uses real people and real people's names. Um, all right, so I'm just going to briefly go over it with you. It talks about there was a rich man. And you guys know the story, I think. Uh, Guillermo, do you know the story? Or, okay, well, let's, let's explain it to him. The rich, there was a rich man, and there was a poor guy, Lazarus. All right? And the rich man, um, uh, there was a certain rich man who was splendidly clothed in purple and fine linen who lived each day in luxury. At his gate lay a poor man named Lazarus who was covered with sores. As Lazarus lay there longing for scraps, the rich man's table, the, for scraps from the rich man's table, the dogs would come and lick his open sores. All right, so you get the picture. Rich guy, and then this poor guy waiting for scraps to fall from his table to eat, and then dogs licking the sores on his body. Finally, the poor man died and was carried by the angels to be with Abraham. The rich man also died and was buried. And his soul went to the place of the dead. There in torment he saw Abraham in the far distance with Lazarus at his side. The rich man shouted, Father Abraham, have some pity. Send Lazarus over here to dip the tip of his finger in water and cool my tongue. I am in anguish in these flames. But Abraham said to him, Son, remember that during your lifetime you had everything you wanted, and Lazarus had nothing. So now he is here being comforted, and you are in anguish. And besides, there is a great chasm separating us. No one can cross over to you from here, and no one can cross over to us from there. All right, so there's a little bit more to the story, but that's the most, most of it. Okay, so the story is you got this rich guy, and then you have Lazarus. Rich man and Lazarus die. Okay, they both die. One goes to Abraham's bosom, and one goes to torment. And there's this big chasm in between, and, um, and the... To the Rich man yells out to, to Abraham, Hey, tell uh, Lazarus or tell the poor guy to give me, just dip his finger in water and give me some, because I'm in torment here. Um, and, and then it goes on to say, Go tell my brothers. But the whole point is, is that these guys died, and then they're in this place to where it talks about Hades. It doesn't say hell, it's Hades, which is the place of the dead. That's, the, that's like the grave where everybody's waiting. Um, and it, like we studied the words in, in hell, where it all is, it's Hades is this particular word. So the point is, is that when they died, they were conscious. The parable Jesus uses 
is that when he's referring to this state, they're both conscious. That the, the rich man, when he died, he went to Abraham's bosom, or paradise. And the poor man went to, well, let's say where he went to, he went into torment. So, the point is to think about, is the parable. So, whether it's fiction, whether it's something Jesus just came up with, the unique part of this is that he uses real people, or real names, which he doesn't do in any other one. So, that's something to think about, is that Jesus was talking about possible consciousness after death. Alright, so that's something to think about. So, I, again, it's not, it's not something that the church and that believers need to fight and argue about. But I think that there's we should, we should just be able to know what the Bible really talks about. And today we looked at one side, and we can go a little deeper. Like Josh says, this guy's biased. We're looking at the verses, and we got it for now. Okay, we can see it's pretty clear where it talks about death and sleep. They're often interchangeable. Um, but uh, there's a whole other set of verses that we haven't even touched yet that might make you want to think about it because that's what I, I've always believed this okay and I'm not saying I believe the other one now but I'm just like wait a minute here I gotta think about this because there's some heavy verses on the other side so truth and hope because there's pretty there's some hope but let me just ask you guys how excited are you to die Daisy you ready all right, you don't care. Julia, are you ready to go? <laughs> so I think that's how ready are you to go? And um, again, you know, we're looking at these verses. Paul says, the reason why I think it's pretty cool is because Paul says something that I've been, it's just messed me up. He said, and we'll read it next week, he said, for me to die, uh, oh, what does he say? I have it right here. For me to live is to die. For me to live is to die, and to die is the game. Dying with Jesus is the game. No, that's not it. <laughs> okay. Okay, it says. We have confidence that we should rather be away from the body and at home with the Lord. Okay, he says that. I know, or I would rather be, uh, we'll read the verse next week, but away from this body, absent from the body, present with the Lord. So it's like he had this confidence to say, I could die right now, and I know where I'm going, and I know who I'm going to be with. And I, it, his confidence has kind of messed me up because he's so sure death does not scare him. He's not afraid of it at all. And we'll read what some of the verses he says, is, but it sounds like he's, he's going to go to heaven immediately. That's what it sounds like, and that's where all the intermediate stuff comes into play. And it's messy. I mean, who the heck knows? But I think the, cool, the thing that we could get from this is next week we'll finish it up, is that, you know, that we got to have confidence of death. I and mean, we should be able to, any follower of Jesus should be able to look death in the face and say, you got nothing on me, fool. You know, stuff like that. You know, that kind of confidence to know that death has been beaten and that it doesn't have any power over us and to have that confidence to, you know, to, for, you, for us not to be afraid of what's on the other side of it. But it's, it's just, it's interesting to look at it because a lot of churches do fight about it. And for us to know, even in this room, we got fighters, you know. But just to be able to look at both sides and try to see what's true, we're looking at the same Bible, um, and let's figure it out. So next week we'll go into the other one. If you have some thoughts on the sleeping, bring them next week, and let's talk about it. Um, and next week we'll finish it with uh, going over intermediate heaven and the views on that. So mostly with this whole topic is to help us have confidence that we know where we're going. This whole Seven weeks, or I don't know how long it's going to take, but shouldn't take that long, hopefully. Know where you're going. Okay, so next week, I had something else, but we'll do it next week. So let's just pray and we'll show